Hey, what is going on everyone? This video is going to be talking about the best majors to get into physical therapy school. Now, I'm just going to put it up front here. You do not, I repeat, do not need to have these majors, but statistically speaking, these majors are the best majors to get you the best chances to get into physical therapy school. What's going on everyone? My name is Justin Lee, doctor of physical therapy student and fitness coach. Here you'll find videos on fitness, physical therapy, and lifestyle that helps inspire self-change. This channel is all about lifting others and lifting weights. So let's lift for change, people. If any of this resonates with you, feel free to subscribe, baby. All right, you're watching this video because your question is, which major is the best major for physical therapy school? Yeah, which major is the best? Ugh. I'm glad you asked that, Justin, with an Asian accent that came out of nowhere. But what the hell? I love the Asian accent and I love you guys. So let's just get into this video on tips and insights on the best majors for physical therapy school. So those of you who are watching this video, make sure you're taking notes because it's not only my insight here, but it's also statistically on the top majors to get into physical therapy school. I already have it ready. Ugh. Let's go coach you. All right, all right, calm down. Yo, if you don't like that Asian guy, give this a thumbs up. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna break this video down into three different parts. Number one, the top majors I got accepted into the physical therapy system. Number two, why certain majors are more beneficial than others. And number three, which courses I thought in my undergrad career that were the most important and the most relevant for DPT school. All right, number one, which majors were the top majors to get accepted into the PT system? Now, I have the statistics online. This is directly from the PTCAS applicant data report from 2017 to 2018, which is the most current research out there. But of course, as application and as they are gathering more data, these uh, data points are going to update as, we, as life goes on. Okay, so here it is. The top majors to get accepted into the PT system were exercise science, kinesiology, biology, health science, and psychology. On the data report, they have the top 15 most accepted majors, but just for this video, I'm gonna be talking about the top five. Exercise science ranked the highest, which had 28% of all applicants go and major into that. Kinesiology was 16, and biology was 9%. But do you have to have the kinesiology major to get accepted into the PT school? No, not necessarily. You don't have to have those exercise science, kinesiology majors, or even the science majors in particular to get accepted into PT school. Now, these were just the top majors that students had when they were applying into school. And of course, DPT school love that you have a kinesiology background, you have a good understanding of human body movement, and hopefully a science background too, because of course, a doctor of physical therapy is very science-based. But just because you're a non-science major like business or art or anything like that, that doesn't mean your chances of DPT school are gone. If you look at the statistics, there are a ton of other majors like athletic training, liberal studies, general studies. So you don't have to be a specific major for like kinesiology or anything like that to get into school. Which brings me up to point number two why certain majors are more beneficial than others when getting into DPT school and beyond when you're in DPT school. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. I hope you're still taking notes. Oh, trust me, I am. So certain majors, in my opinion, are more beneficial than others. And there are pros and cons to every single major. So for example, the 28% that were the exercise science majors, of course, when you have that background, the PT schools love that because you have that understanding of human body movement. But here's the shadow side. How does that make you stand out from the other 28% of the other applicants? Who knows? 
But let's say you were a different major, like a business or a liberal studies major or something just totally unrelevant. You have a better experience and just a different experience than the other applicants that are applying. So like if you're a business major, you might have a better understanding of marketing, of business administration, of maybe learning how to have leadership, which is all huge characteristics and all huge aspects that um, employers are looking for when you're applying to get a job as a physical therapist. Or a liberal studies major, like let's say you're just a, an effective communicator, you know how to educate, you know how to teach. And just like these videos where I'm educating you, you as a physical therapist are going to have to educate patients in the future. And that's something that I did not really understand and know that I was gonna have to be a huge educator in what I was doing as a physical therapist, what I'm doing as a, for treatment, and just explaining where the, the patient is able to understand what is happening. So all in all, whether you're an exercise science major or something totally unrelevant, it doesn't really matter too much, but of course, in my biased opinion, having that exercise science slash kinesiology major or background has played a huge, huge impact on my understanding in learning. And not only that, but also just the application of just doing things. Okay, kinesiology, exercise science, good. Business, good. Liberal studies, good. What major is the best? There's actually not a best major for physical therapy school, but it really all depends on what works best for you. And when it comes to working best, in my experience, because I was an exercise science major, these are the courses that I thought that were super helpful in my DPT career. First off, let's talk same language and prerequisites. None of my prerequisite courses has really helped me in my DPT learning career, except two courses. The first one being physics, because of course you have to learn how forces work, how the moment arm works, right? Learning how if a force goes down, there's another uh, force going and opposing that, and learning the different laws of physics and the world. So all of that stuff is important because as you're treating somebody or as you're applying force to uh, mobilize a joint or stretch a joint, you have to understand which direction is the best way and the most effective way to get the best out of your treatment. And then number two, for APU, you have to take a communication class and I took public communication. And that class honestly has taught me and given me a lot of skills to not only give me the confidence to talk in front of people and this video, but to also be an effective communicator. And I'm still learning and I know I still have a lot, a lot, a lot to learn. But that course has really taught me because later on, as a future physical therapist, I'm gonna be have, I'm gonna have to talk in front of a lot of people, a lot of families, one on one, hopefully in front of a bunch of people, different students, maybe some seminars. So all of that stuff has been important for me, and that course in public communication has been super helpful. All right, so that was the prerequisites. So now let's talk about my undergrad major and my courses that I took in that. I took two courses that were super, super, super like beyond. I am so grateful for taking these courses because these courses has helped me to just dive deep, dive so deep into this subject. And then when I got into DPT school, I was just able to take it to the next level. Okay, stop talking. Hurry up and tell me what course is. All right, chill Asian Justin, don't get all kimchi on me. All right, the two courses that helped me out the most was kinesiology and corrective exercise. Now kinesiology has taught me just how basic biomechanics work, how the body was able to move, which muscles are attaching, whether they're two joint or one joint, and how that helps move certain joints. It helped me to, it helped me learn arthrokinematics on the concave versus convex rule, and how that and how that applies to different joints. It has taught me just regular understanding of human body movement in the different types of regions on the body, like the cervical spine, like that's a a little tricky like side bend rotation that's coupled you didn't really understand that when I was in undergrad before that class I was like okay the neck just does this 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 
but then as the orientation of those facet joints in your cervical spine and how they're aligned when you do side bend and rotation they're coupled so then when you're in PT school you learn all right if they need a little bit more rotation I can also side bend them and then that can also help rotation what? Wow side bend rotation and then there's corrective exercise and now this course has really taught me, basically, if you're in physical therapy or you know about physical therapy, you have TheraX, right? Therapeutic exercise. And what you're doing with TheraX, it's a sort, it's a type of treatment. And what it does is that it helps correct muscle imbalances that you find in your, in your examination and also helps uh, get rid of the impairments that you also find. So for example, if I am lacking shoulder range of motion and if you feel that that's a big impairment in your physical therapy evaluation, then you're going to use therapeutic exercise to help them get more range of motion. So one example, one exercise I would do is say, all right, let's do some wall walks. So you go on the wall and you walk it up and then you try to get more range of motion. There you go. And so corrective exercise kind of teaches you that a little bit. It also teaches you what's called muscle imbalance. So like, let's say, let's say you're uh, lifting something overhead and then you're finding that as I'm lifting, oh, I'm arching my back to get up a little higher. So you know that one of the muscles here, like the lats, are, they go from, they attach right here on the arm bone and they come down to the back. So if that muscle's tight, then you're unable to get your arm overhead and then you're gonna compensate by arching your back. And so these concepts are the concepts that I learned in the corrective exercise and then kinesiology, which just helps me get a huge understanding of the human body. So that being said, if you ever have an opportunity to take kinesiology or if you're taking it now, I highly recommend that you pay the most attention, go all in on understanding that. Because when you get into DPT school, game over. You're already gonna be ahead. Kinesiology, okay, thank you. So ultimately the best major for physical therapy school, eh, there's not really a particular one. Of course, the PT cast showed the statistics that these were the top ranking majors that students were that applied but that doesn't mean that if you're a different major that you can't apply to. So I'm encouraging you, if you're not one of those exercise science, kinesiology or biology majors or anything like that, and you're still like, I kind of want to do physical therapy, there's still a chance and you could still get accepted into physical therapy school. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I hope it has inspired some self change to go out there. If you're in kinesiology right now, go balls deep in that class. That is like the best advice I can say if you're taking that class right now. It has been a game changer. All right guys, thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I come out with a new video every single Monday to just stay updated with all of y'all and try to put out the highest quality video and content for you guys to be entertained and educated with. Whether it's physical therapy, fitness, or lifestyle, I love to make these videos for you guys. So if you guys can do me a favor, please comment below. If you like this video, give this a thumbs up or write down something positive with this video. Or if you want to go above and beyond, feel free to share this video with somebody who you think needs to hear this. Thank you everyone. I hope this inspired some self change. Change people, change people. That's why we live for change people. Come on, come on, come on. Justin, say that with me. Change your people, change your people. That's why we live for change your people. Have a good one. <laughs> Have a great one, you guys.